Well, the name of our company is Palco Prep Incorporated, and we've worked with a number of different museums uh, in British Columbia, um, Newfoundland, uh, the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, um, the New Museum in Utah, uh, Texas, so all over the world. And we're actually uh, working on a project in Dubai, of all places right now, that may come to fruition there. So. Well, with this talus, sort of the biggest challenge was uh, recreating what would you know, look as a, a living animal, represent a living animal through uh, skeletal remains that are very fragmentary. So the challenge is to uh, make the most accurate, scientifically reconstructed animal you can, but have a, a, a fluid looking living animal at the end of it. Those are always a challenge when you're doing these sort of exhibits. Well, the replication of these things is it's quite a lengthy process, really. Um, first of all, we get the original material and if it's not prepared, that is all the matrix removed from them. And we have a preparation lab at our facility as well. So we prepare the bones for molding, the molding process. Once the molds are done, um, we don't need the original material anymore, so that's returned to the institution. And from that, we will cast replica casts of the real material. Uh, in some cases, we're missing a lot of the material, so we'll sculpt very accurate models to fit in, fill in the missing pieces. So we have the cast ones, our sculpted pieces. From that, we'll build an entire animal. And we'll take those pieces and, and put them on a supporting armature of steel. And we try to conceal the steel as much as possible so the person gets that illusion of this thing floating in the air. It's a difficult process, and we spend a lot of time doing very good work that no one ever sees. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see our work, that's a good thing because we want to look like, have it look like these things just appeared that way. So once that's done, uh, we, have a, we do a test articulation in our shop, make sure everything is oriented properly so that it's going to hang in the client's facility at the right angle, things like that, and then create it up and uh, do the installation. We have very talented uh, uh, engineers, artists, welders, things like that. Um, Jim Wood, our artist, is an amazing sculptor and painter. So really, without these people, I'm, you know, it, it, you can't stand alone in this. You need really a team of people to, to help. Well, our main uh, consultant on this was Takuya Konishi, and he's been working out of the Terrell Museum, and Dr. Michael Caldwell out of uh, University of Alberta and we would uh, back and forth with them a lot on the, the different poses of the Mosasaur. In particular, this will be the first correctly mounted um, tail posture for a Tylosaurus or any Mosasaur in the world. The tail actually curved down and had a fleshy um, opposite side, much like a, a shark's tail. And uh, apart from, um, unlike mammals, which undulate uh, vertically, they move laterally and had a propulsive thing and it was all the tail, that was the driving mechanism for this thing. So we're really trying to, to focus on how this is mounted correctly there and some other more um, um, esoteric bones in the skull that have been corrected correctly uh, postured as well. It's very easy to work something out on a computer or on a piece of paper, but when it comes to the articulation of the real bones, you really have to let the bones speak to how um, they should be oriented. And uh, we did that. And what's, what happens a lot in this business is you're going with what my dad said, what my granddaddy said, and that, well, there's, you know, maybe your granddaddy was wrong. And we just kept, so we threw all that out the window and, and started right from ground zero with this and built it the way the science told us to build it.